Well, at least someone in charge of some of the COVID vaccine rollout is thinking big and aiming to get set to get this done. Today, the hero premier of this pandemic, Gladys Berejiklian, was thinking big, big like the US and the UK, which have been using drive-through sporting venues to roll out the jab and sporting stadiums to service tens of thousands at a time. The New South Wales health plan is to open a mass vac vaccination hub at Sydney Olympic Park, likely inside the Royal Easter Show precinct. Now, this is how you supercharge the process. And whether it can be done or not, given the slow release of actual vaccine, at least a plan is being formulated so that if doses from CSL in Melbourne do arrive in their tens of thousands as promised, New South Wales has a mass vaccination hub ready to take advantage of those circumstances. Uh, our ability to do 60,000 vaccinations a week depends on us getting the supply of the vaccine from the Commonwealth. At the end of the day, the Commonwealth is responsible for getting the vaccine to the states. Uh, they're responsible for making sure we have those doses to be able to give out. Now, the Health Secretary, Brendan Murphy, still isn't sure about when those million doses per week will begin to leave the laboratory. So, CSL are releasing batches sometimes more than twice a week, so it's very hard to give an exact number. So, no one got an exact number. In fact, Murphy was rather, well, cold on the idea of establishing a mass vaccination hub at the moment. It's not possible to stand up a large number of additional mass vaccination clinics. We don't have the vaccine to do that. Not now, but if we have it in two weeks once the batch approval is done, you might be advised to be ready. Like we have established today that 2.5 million doses of our locally produced AstraZeneca vaccine are actually still sitting inside those laboratories waiting for what's called batch testing approval. They're done, ready to go. Now, there's no word when that will happen, but some are suggesting in two to three weeks' time. It is mighty frustrating. We all get that. But as the PM reiterated today, circumstances would be very different if the EU hadn't stood in the way of millions of doses. 3.1 million of the contracted vaccines that we had been relying upon in early January when we'd set out a series of targets, did not turn up in Australia. That is just a simple fact. Now, that fact has been the key reason um, for the early phases of the supply shortage in the rollout of the vaccine. It's, it's straightforward maths. 3.1 million out of 3.8 million doses did not come to Australia. However, for the first time since the government began explaining the hold-up, which is about a week ago, the European Union has weighed in and they don't sound too happy with what they're being accused of. No, we certainly uh, cannot, confirm, um, cannot confirm any a new decision to block um, vaccine exports uh, to Australia or to any other country for that, for that matter. Make of that what you will. Australia is in a very small risk environment. But as winter approaches, efforts need to ramp up to get the other half of the aged care population, the other half, and the vulnerable vaccinated before we head into winter in June. But well done to the New South Wales Premier, despite what we heard from the Health Secretary, who again is showing initiative and showing her smarts in being ready for the next stage. Mass vaccination hubs will be the way forward. That's the lesson abroad. And there's no point waiting around until tens of thousands of vials suddenly arrive by refrigerated truck one day. The time for planning is now. OK, let's bring in two of Alan's sparring partners on a Wednesday night. New South Wales Minister for Finance and Small Business, Damien Tudhope, and New South Wales Labor MP, Chris Minns. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Chris, good to be with you. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. All right, the COVID vaccine rollout. Uh, it's as frustrating as it gets right now, and we've had this almost daily blame game. There's the politics of the rollout, which I'm now getting sick to death of, as I'm sure you are too. Would you like to see the states take sole control of the rollout, Damien? Well, I think the, the, the answer to that is yes, and I think we are, uh, in fact, 
uh, responsible for the rollout. Uh, and the Premier is right when she says we rely on the Commonwealth to import the drug or to uh, provide the manufactured drug, but we are, in fact, responsible for the delivery. And, and Chris, you're 100% right. Um, uh, to have a hub uh, planned is what government should do. Whether the, uh, the vaccine is available tomorrow is irrelevant. To have a plan to be able to deliver it as quickly as possible is something that government should be involved in. And if you look at the experience in England, where I think they used Ascot Racecourse uh, for the, a mass rollout over there, they've been enormously successful in getting a great majority of their population vaccinated in a very quick time. That's why I think the Premier is 100% right to say, well, let's start the plan now. Uh, if, in fact, CSL... Uh, get their vaccine out quickly. We want to be in a position to get the majority of citizens of this state vaccinated as quickly as possible. See, I said once upon a time when, the, when Victoria was coming out of their lengthy lockdown, Chris Minns, that they better now sort out exactly what they do with a uniform single QR code. Well, even today they're using multiple QR codes, which makes it additionally difficult for contact tracers. You've got to be ahead of the curve, don't you? Yeah, you do. You have to be cognisant that things are going to change and prepare as best that you can. I think there's been some big problems between the state and the Commonwealth. I have to give big credit to Brad Hazard and his management of this. I'd love to land a punch on him, but you can't. He's done a very good job, Chris. I mean, one of the things I'm worried a bit about is that last week Hazard said that the New South Wales government was unclear what nursing homes had been vaccinated and which had not been. Now, that's a big public health problem and it's indicative of, I think the fact that the state and the Commonwealth Government are just not aligned. So mass vaccination hubs are a great idea, but are we going to have enough vaccines to make sure that people who turn up to these centres are actually going to get vaccinated? Well, th there's an additional problem with that, according to people that I've spoken to in aged care, in that when officials come to do the jab, there are usually, because of hospital visitations and sickness, illness within the aged care system or venue, there are usually four or five... Um, people there, residents there, that don't end up getting the jab. So somehow those charged with giving the jab have to come back to those locations. Now, I don't know when that's going to happen, but it does complicate things even further. Um, I like the fact mm. that Gladys Berejiklian is getting on the front foot, um, but what are your thoughts about the hesitancy from the PM and the Health Secretary there? I didn't understand that, Damien. I thought well, they'd be encouraging the states to get ahead. Yeah, well, uh, well uh, I think they are nervous about uh, a plan to roll out maximum vaccine uh, vaccinations in circumstances where they can't deliver the vaccine because it really does expose the planning that the federal government ha has in place. So this is really amping up the pressure on the federal government to yep. say, where, where are you up to with delivering this vaccine? Where is CSL up to? Where are the imported vaccines up to? If there is something that's got to be done to get the 3.1 million doses in Australia which haven't been delivered yet, what are you doing to get yep. them here? And that conversation has got to be had. For our part, we're saying, well, uh, we're going to make the facilities available to roll this out as quickly as possible when it's arrived. And I think yep. it's, it's an important part of the conversation that we ramp up that pressure on the federal government and say, we're ready, you just give us the stuff, we're ready to go. Yeah, I, I agree. I want to go to another story. I, I need some inside information from you, Chris Minns, because... The story today about the Queensland MP, Andrew Lamming, who's quite often off the wall, um, having allegedly 30 <laughs> unapproved Facebook accounts. Is this the new way of communicating to your electorate? So you being forced to get on Instagram and Snapchat and all of those other platforms, is that the go? <laughs> Hold on. I do have those accounts, but only one of them. And my name's attached to it, Chris, I promise you. Look, he's a pretty... He's a pretty weird character, this lambing bloke. He was pretty loose when he was commenting under his own name, so God knows what he was saying when he was under a pseudonym. <laughs> I mean, I think Scott Morrison was right, actually, a couple of days ago when he said he's not sure social media is a good thing for the body politics. My experience is that people say things online that they'd never say at a town hall or a polling booth, and I think it's sort of coarsening our public discourse and it's not necessarily good. One of the funny things, Chris, about his uh, Andrew Lambing's website is that he'd set up a fake account holding politicians in Redlands to account. 
<laughs> and I'm sure he gave himself some pretty high marks. So it's, yeah. it's pretty funny stuff. Uh, of course, there wouldn't be any evidence that we could find, Damien, of political parties setting up social media accounts to denigrate the other side constantly. We couldn't find that anywhere, would we? Um, I, I note the irony in your voice, Chris. Uh, I, I have to say that um, uh, I think that there, there needs to be a level of caution in this. There often is a case... Uh, in circumstances where really good, legitimate uh, community groups who have have interests get taken over by people who have a political protest that they want to use the community group for. So when that merger, when that political side is taken over uh, by interest groups, it then becomes a bit edgy. You know, the AEC will sort out what Lemming has done if he, in fact, uh, is uh, has been using fake Facebook accounts for political content, then uh, they should uh, take the appropriate remedies. But there's a warning for us all here uh, that if you are going to do this sort of stuff and use social media for protest uh, organisations and pretend you're a community group, uh, maybe the, the warning for us all is is that the AEC will come after you. And, you know, uh, I'm not uh, all that cognizant about a lot of the social media outlets that are available, but there, is, there are people who are, and I think that this is a really good step to provide a warning for politicians generally. Yeah. Make sure that if you write stuff, you own it. Yeah, it'd be good to see a precedent Damien, there. Damien, have you got a... Uh, I want to know if Damien's got a TikTok account. Um, uh, no, Chris, uh, I, I don't have one, but uh, I'm sure you do. No, no, no. I don't. Chris <laughs> Minns, you, are you on TikTok? Chris Minns. Chris Minns, are you on I'm not. I'm not, actually. No. One day. Stay one off day. it. Very quickly, is the yeah. Upper Hunter by-election ne next month a referendum on coal, Chris Minns? Well, I think it's a referendum on a lot of things, the New South Wales government to begin with. And really, it's going to come down to who's got the better vision for the hunter, who's going to provide the jobs for the future. I think we should be focusing on domestic manufacturing in that part of New South Wales. We should be building our trains, our buses, our ferries in that part of the world. That's what Western Australia, Queensland and Victoria are doing. Good, well-paid, middle-class jobs in regional New South Wales. That's what we need to focus on. OK, 15 seconds, Damien. Well, Have you, you patched the holes up from the Malcolm Turnbull debacle? Um, well, I think uh, Malcolm Turnbull needs some lessons in self-awareness. Uh, the reality is Malcolm Turnbull should have quit before we had to sack him. Uh, the statements he made about coal were just inconsistent with the New South Wales government's approach and uh, he should have had enough self-awareness to have sacked himself rather than require the government to, to get rid of him. But uh, I noticed Chris didn't mention coal amongst all those things that he said. Probably this is a referendum on Jody no, as much as anything. <laughs> Could be a referendum on Jody. Chris Minns, Damien Tudhope, you can continue that debate when Alan comes back next week. Thank you so much for your time. Good night. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris.